Let us begin. Where is everyone? Frogging in the sunshine. At the beach. All right. I guess here's the first important announcement of today. The um, AICG Dance Bonanza will be taking place on April 12th. So I just want to mention that. It's up here. Um, so see these two individuals. If you seek to purchase tickets, I guess, and they're only $10, but there, there's a limited supply. So, all right. With that in mind, please remember that um, Tuesday, we're going to start the class by doing MATLAB. You remember I read... Are you going to be sharing that drink? Why does this guy bring these massive drinks? <laughs> I brought two cups today. He's got like 64 ounces of lemonade or something. Do you want to No. <laughs> obviously, obviously not. I don't know where that lemonade's been. Um, that's how it looked, at least. So... Um, Tuesday, bring your, um, if you don't normally bring your laptops, bring them Tuesday because we're going to be doing the nonlinear algebraic equation exercise at the beginning, like the first half of the class Tuesday, and then I'll do a part of a lecture. And that way, for the homework that I think is due Wednesday, right, it's MATLAB homework, you'll be in a better position to be able to do it. And then there's a test next Thursday. And I'll talk about that at some point. Not that there's a lot to talk about, but I will. All right. Um, this is my son offering up some empty excuses about bad behavior. Okay. Um, all right, so here's what we're going to talk about today. So again, we're ta I don't want to touch this board. I'm going to be writing over here. So again, we're talking about um, Solving this type of equation, right, or sets of equations. So, it might be a single nonlinear function f and a single unknown x, or it might be, you know, five coupled nonlinear algebraic equations and five unknowns, um, potentially something like that. Um, so, last time we talked about something called the direct substitution method, which I'll come back, or the, sorry, so the fixed point method. So, I want to start by talking about if we didn't know already what were some of the limitations of that. And then I'm going to talk about the most common method to solve nonlinear algebraic equations, which is called Newton-Raphson. And then a variant of that called the secant method. And then when you come in Tuesday, I'll teach you how to do this all in MATLAB. All right. So here's what we learned about um, the fixed point method. So for example, if we had an equation like, like the type I wrote, f of x equals zero, then we could if we chose to, and this again is not unique, but we could do the following. We could add x onto both sides of the equation. We could call this new function here, f of x plus x, we could call that function g of x. And then from this equation x equal g of x, we could come up with this inter equation like this. So everything on the right hand side gets evaluated at n. Everything on the left hand side, which is just x, gets evaluated at n plus 1. So again here the subscript is the iteration. It's not the, it's not it's not telling you what element it is in the vector. Okay, it's a single value x. And so we start off with a value x0. And w that's a guess of what we think the solution of this equation is. We plug it in here and here and we generate a value x2, sorry, x1. And then we plug the value x1 back over here, get x2 and so on and so forth. Okay. And there's uh, many different ways you could consider getting this function g of x, which I, I showed you this last time, various ways you might do this. Um, and we talked about, so a point that satisfies this equation, meaning that x equals g of x is called a fixed point. That's why it's called a fixed point method. And so by definition, a solution would mean if you plug in s and g, you get s back. So in other words, this, this is an iter iterative process, right? So if we, if, if we have the right answer, it's going to stop at the answer. That's the idea. And the answer being s. And if we find that value x that's a fixed point of this iterative map here, iterative equation, then um, that'll also be a solution to the original equation. So if it works, it'll, it'll you know, give us the solution. All right. The problem is it doesn't often work, right? So there's many problems with this, four I pointed out. One is that the function g of x is not unique. Okay. So there's many different ways to form the function g, g of x, and last time I showed you that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, depending what the function g of x is. Okay. 
And recall when we have this kind of iterative method like this, then you're going to guess an x0, and then you're going to generate a sequence of numbers right, that look like this. And we'd like that to converge. By convergence, I mean the x's get closer to each other as you go on, not get further apart. Um, and so we learn that this function g of x that we would construct like right here isn't unique. And that's a problem because if it's unique and if it's not unique and doesn't matter, then I guess you could say who cares. But if it's not unique and matters and you don't know how to pick it, that's not good. <laughs> okay. So we really don't know how to pick g of x. The, I showed you last time the method can easily diverge. Okay. And the divergence can depend on the, the, how you construct this function. Like you construct it one way it works, another way it doesn't work. It also can depend strongly on the initial guess. Okay? So if you guess well, means close to the solution, it might work, but if you don't, it does not. Okay? In other words, it tends to be pretty sensitive to the guess. And for most equations, you don't know the answer. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing this. So it's hard to guess really close. Okay? Um, so I didn't really focus on this too much, but I think you'll see it in this lecture. This thing can exhibit pretty slow convergence. So if you look at this sequence you, can, you generate over here, you're hoping this will converge. And fast convergence means the numbers get close together very quickly. And I'll show you this. And this method is known to have slow convergence. So it might take a long time to converge. That's not a problem if you have one equation. But if you were to do this with thousands of equations and thousands of unknowns, then slow convergence would be a bit of an issue. Okay. Actually, there's only three problems, one, two, three. So what do we need here? We need more stable. What I mean by stable, I mean things that don't diverge as easily, okay? And we also need it to be faster, addressing this problem, so that it will converge to, to the right answer more reliably and more quickly, okay? So the most common method, um, you, this is one of the most common techniques used in all numerical methods called the Newton-Raphson method. So, the number of type of numerical calculations that one performs that require solution of nonlinear algebraic equations is like huge. So when we talk about differential equations, we'll talk about methods that require numerical methods of solving the differential equation that involve this kind of idea that requires a solution of linear, I'm sorry, nonlinear algebraic equations and often we'll use this type of method. So this is very common. It's one of the, I don't know how to rank them, but it's one of the very top uh, numerical methods in terms of its importance and use. So to derive it, <coughs> you can consider doing a Taylor series expansion. There's many ways to derive it, but here's one way. You remember the Taylor series expansion? So we have, a, we have this equation, right? f of x equals zero. What we're going to do is a Taylor series expansion of the function f about the point x bar. You may remember this from like freshman calculus, okay? So to do this Taylor series expansion about the point x bar, first of all, you have the function evaluated at x bar, right? Then you take the first derivative of the function. That's another function. You evaluate that function at x bar and multiply that times x minus x bar. Um, the next term, which I didn't put in there because we don't need it. Um, the next term, if I'm not mistaken, would be like 1 over 2 factorial. It would be the second derivative of f with respect to x. I'm sorry. With respect to x. That whole thing, evaluate x naught, and then you'd multiply that x minus, sorry, x bar, x minus x bar squared. Does that look familiar to you? That's a Taylor series expansion of a function about a point. So we've neglected this term and all the higher order terms. That's why I have the thing over there that says approximate, if I can get it right there. Okay. So once we have this equation here, we can do the following. You can kind of turn this into an iterative equation. Okay. So what we do is evaluate everything on, as usual, on the left hand side, which is this over here, at n plus one. So you substitute for x, you substitute x n plus one. And then every time you see so every time you see x, you substitute x n plus one. So that's right there, and also right there, right? And every time you see x bar, you substitute x n. So that would be right there, right there, and right there, okay? So that's an equation. What do you do with it? Well, you can take that equation. You can solve it for xn plus 1. Okay, so if you take this equation here, this thing equals 0. 
and solve it for x n plus 1, you get this equation right here. Okay? And that, that equation is the newton raphson equation. So to use it, well, I should say, hopefully everyone sees it's not very hard to s <laughs> take this thing equal 0 and solve for xn plus 1. So in order to evaluate this, what do you need? Well, you need the function itself, no surprise there, but I mentioned this last time. You also need the derivative of the function. So whatever function you have, you have to be able to take the derivative of it, right? And, and hopefully the derivative doesn't go to 0, right? If the derivative goes to 0, you're going to be in trouble because you divide by it. Shorthand notation is called that derivative f prime. I'm sure you've seen that before. Okay. So this thing right here is the New newton raphson method. I don't know who Raphson is, but I know who Newton was. Okay. Um, and so the real value of this, as we're about to see, is it, it works. It's much more robust, meaning it will work from poorer initial guesses than the direct uh, fixed point method will, will work. Um, and it converges much faster, generally speaking. And the, the, there's a cost associated with that. And the cost is you have to take this derivative, got to find this derivative. Okay? And so if the function is really simple, finding the derivative is not a big deal. Okay? But I'll tell you, if you have more than one equation, this can get a little bit uh, cumbersome. And I'll explain that to you in a minute. So this is the basic iteration equation. So what do you do? I give you x0, right? You evaluate the function at x0. You evaluate the derivative at x0. You plug in x0 there, you generate x1. Then you take x1, put it back over here, generate x2. Same kind of thing, okay? But you evaluate not only the function at xn, but also its derivative. Okay, so this gives kind of a graphical picture of how it works, right? So this is the first two iterations, which I already said. <clears throat> you take, you guess an x0. You generate this equation, get an x1, and that's depicted graphically here, right? So here's your x0. You come up to the curve. The, der you, the derivative gives you this slope here, okay? So this is the old, you remember the rise over run for the slope, okay? And so you take the derivative and that's the slope of the tangent line at this point and then it comes down here and that gives you your new x1. Then you come up to the curve again, evaluate the derivative at x1, that gives you a new value which will be x2 and you can see you, you're probably going to converge that point pretty quickly. That's what you're looking for, right? That's where the function equals zero right there. Okay? So it's taken advantage of, that, of knowledge of the curvature of the curve. So the other methods just use, just evaluate the function. By evaluating the derivative, you, you can see, you can, um, you know something about the shape of the curve and you can take advantage of that. Okay? This is also, I assume, <coughs> sorry, when you guys took calculus, I don't know, did they ever call this thing the gradient? Or you've seen that in a chemical engineering course, maybe? Okay. All right, multivariate calculus is called the gradient. So. The, the, you can say, you know, that what you're doing is kind of running down the gradient, right? You're seeing that the function decreases in this direction and you're heading in that direction using the derivative, okay? Um, okay, so this will tend to have much better convergence property than the fixed point method um, that we talked about last time, but the, the expense is you have to compute the derivative. And you might say, well, big deal. Um, now how bad can that be? Well, First of all, um, if the function f is really complex, it may not be that easy to calculate the derivative, right? You have to be able to differentiate. You can differentiate anything, but it might be really cumbersome if the equation is really super complex, okay? Um, the other thing is you might have more than one function in, in one unknown, and then I'm going to cover that case later. But then you don't need a derivative. You need a whole matrix of derivatives. So if you had a 100 by 100 system, right, 100 equations, 100 unknowns, you would need 10,000 derivatives. That may seem pretty, pretty impractical, <laughs> okay? So I'll, I'll, come, I'll come back to that in, in a few minutes, okay? So, you know, it's like anything in, the, in, the, in life, right? You ever seen those commercials where, or the, you could see a news program where they say there's somebody who's been taking advantage of old people by making some outrageous promises about, you know, some deal that they can get? It's the same kind of thing, right? Um, you know, it's got better properties, but there's some costs associated. It doesn't come for free, okay? But the value of doing this, usually it's well worth the expense of doing it. So here's a couple of examples which we already did, okay? So this was just quadratic equation. We already know these are the solutions. Um, so this is, so to do this you have to take, take the derivative, right? Derivative of a quadratic is pretty easy to compute. I hope you all realize this is the derivative of that. Just hoping at this point. All right. So. Now you form the iterative equation, so you have xn plus 1 equal xn. That's the minus, right? There's a minus sign there if you look at the equation. That's the function f divided by the derivative of the function f, 
right? So put that in for the function, put that in for the derivative, and there you have it, okay? Now obviously, <coughs> you're gonna be in trouble here if this thing goes to zero, right? So I wouldn't suggest like your initial guess being three halves. <laughs> That'd be a bad choice, okay? Um, but you can kind of see how this works, right? If you look at this equation, you can see one is xn, what does convergence mean? It means xn equal, xn plus one equals xn. When's that's gonna happen? That's gonna happen when the numerator equals zero, right? And the numerator equals zero is what you're looking for, right? That means you've found a, a solution. All right, so here's how it works. So obviously I just took this into MATLAB and computed with it real quick. So here's an initial guess of one. Right, saying, I, you know, I don't know anything. These are the same guesses I made before. And as I recall last time, I don't remember which, but I think last time, this one for the fixed point method, this one worked, and we found this answer, and this one, this one diverged, actually. And then I reformulated the fixed point, and then I could get it to work for both initial guesses, but I could, like, never find that one or something mm -hmm. like that, okay? So this is how solvers will generally work. If you look at this guess one, you can see... I won't bother explaining to you why if you plug in one into this equation for xn you get zero. Just trust me on that one. But you can see within three iterations, you, you're, you're, you know, three or four iterations, you're there. So it's convergence quite quick, right? And if you guess three, same kind of thing happens, even faster probably. And then you, find, you actually find the other root as well, okay? So this is how good solvers normally work. If you take a guess, so you might say, why did this guess go to that answer and why did this guess go to that answer? And that's because this guess is close to that answer and this guess is close to that answer, right? So there's some dividing line in here that if you guess, you know, some's called X critical. If you guess less than X critical, you're gonna find this one. If you guess greater than X critical, you're gonna find that one. It's between one and three, I don't know what it is, okay? It divides up this algorithm into solutions where you're gonna get that versus solution that's gonna get that. Um, I think I played around with this a little. I didn't write a code, I just did this by hand in MATLAB. But I'm sure you could find a, a bad enough initial guess to make this fail, okay? Um, but it works for most initial guess, guesses that I recall were uh, trying. Okay, so that's good, works for that one. Okay, this is the old theory part. Remember I told you not to be afraid? <laughs> I'm not sure many of you bought that, but um, so again, what are we going to use this thing for? We're trying to understand when this method is going to work, and the second thing I'm going to introduce here is I'm going to give you some measure of how fast it converges, okay? Because just to have a method that works isn't enough if it converges really, really, really slowly, right? So you want it to also converge fast. So these, this is basically a theorem telling you right here when it works and then if it does work how fast it works how fast it converges so if you look at this you, you have this function I think this really oh this is fine uh, okay okay so what does it say so we've written it in this form right and we have a solution here I should have I, I wish I would have said um, assume I'll, I'll probably rewrite this. I should probably write f of x equals zero and it has a solution x equals s. That's probably from copying the fixed point slide, to be honest with you. Don't hate me, all right? Um, and so it says, okay, first of all, this should say f of x equals zero. Let it have a solution. So assume it has a solution. That's not restrictive, because if it doesn't have a solution, what do you do? Why, why are you looking for one, okay? Assume it's three times differentiable. In other words, assume you can take the function f and differentiate it three times, okay? That's most functions can be differentiated as many times as you want, okay? Assume its first and second derivatives are non-zero at the solution. The second derivative being non-zero at the solution is kind of a technical condition, but the first one is critical, right? Because if the, whoops, eh. If the first derivative is zero at the solution, you're screwed, right? Because you have to eventually find the solution. There's no way of getting around that, right? This function might go to zero somewhere, but you might just jump over it, right? But if it's zero at the solution itself, you, you know you're gonna have trouble because you're trying to find the solution. It's, you're, you're trying to get close to it. And this thing is gonna grow and eventually become zero. So, you know, that's, that's what I would say is um, uh, something that precludes a bizarre example someone might come up with. It's not normally gonna be the case that that's true, okay? All right, so, um, so 
Oh yeah, and then it has the typical thing where it says, then you have to guess the x not sufficiently close to the solution, and it doesn't tell you how close sufficiently close it is. Okay. In practice, I can tell you it's not as close as with the fixed point method, but it's not. So this is what's known as a local result. In other words, it's not telling you if these things are true, you can pick x not to be anything you want, and it's always going to work. The convergence is local. You have to be within some... I mean, it, make, it makes sense when you think about it, because um, if I were to give you some pathological problem... Let me see if I can come up with a nice pathological picture here. Um, now, it's not that easy, but... Let me see if this works. Okay. All right. So you let, let's say you're looking for this point here. Okay. For example, you're not supposed to touch there. So you know this this is a gradient-based method. So it just kind of goes downhill, right? That's what the derivative does. So if you start here, you go downhill that way. If you start here, you go downhill that way, right? And so you can, I can tell you from the way this is shaped, probably any guess within this well, right? This is the actual value x, we call it, I guess, s. Any guess in here is going to be okay. But, you know, if I guess like over here and go downhill, I'm going to go downhill to infinity, to minus infinity. So, um, so these methods, you know, something unique about nonlinear systems, either differential equations or um, algebraic equations, is the results are always local. You can't give things that are global and work everywhere. So, like, you can't say, guess anywhere you want, it's always going to work. You have to guess in some domain, and it's not, it's not easily known for any particular problem what that domain is, but you have to be sufficiently close. Okay. So, if these things are true, so the way I look at this is to say, is the problem have a solution restrictive? No. Is the fact that it needs to be differential restrictive? No. Is the fact that first order and second derivatives have to be non-zero restrictive? No. Is the fact you have to guess close enough to the answers restrictive? Probably but what are you going to do? Okay. But you remember that in the fixed point method we had that constraint on the function itself, like the derivative of the function f had to be less than k, had to be less than 1. In other words, we put a, we put a restriction on how fast the, the function f could change. It was called, it had to be a contraction mapping. That was very restrictive. You don't see anything like that here. Okay. So that tells you this is probably going to work more often. And if it does work, then you, that it exhibits something called quadratic convergence. So if you define this, okay, so you take the actual solution, which I, you don't know, but it doesn't matter in this context, you subtract off the current value of x that you have, and you call that, you define that thing to be epsilon n, then you can show that epsilon gets smaller like this, like to the square. So every time you eval go through this iteration, epsilon gets smaller according to the square. The higher the power here, the better, okay? Because, right, like if this thing is 0.1, now it's more on the order of like 0.01. So it, it converges very quickly. C here is problem dependent, doesn't really matter. The key thing is that exponent. So people say this is a quadratic method. It, conver it has quadratic convergence. In other words, it converges really quickly. Okay. Okay, great. All sounds, sounds wonderful in principle. Um, so what, these are some caveats you have to worry about. So um, if you guess um, x not poorly, and we all admit we don't know what that means at this point because we don't know how to guess it, and no one really does, to be frank, uh, it could actually converge a lot slower than this, or it could even diverge, right? This is all local, only says if you're close enough, this is true. If you're far away, it may not converge quite quick, or it might not um, converge at all. Clearly, the solution you get depends on your guess, right? So if you want to know if a function has multiple roots, right, like you're looking at this function here, if you have some arbitrarily complex function, you usually don't know how many roots it might have, how many x values will make it zero. So the only way to find that out, and it's not a guarantee, is just to take a lot of different initial guesses and see what you get. Like I might guess, you know, 10 different x's spread out, and if I keep getting the same answer, I just kind of go, I think there's only one answer, and I move on. <laughs> it's not a guarantee, but anyway. Um, and clearly, I already pointed this out a couple times. If that derivative becomes zero anywhere, if you ever evaluate that x, you know, partial derivative, um, sorry, not partial, df dx, if that thing ever becomes zero, then the whole thing, it's singularity and the, the method's going to fail. All right. All right, now let's go to our, fa our famous um, Redlich-Huang equation. We solved this with um, fixed point, I think, not entirely successfully, as I recall. Okay. So there's your Redlich-Huang equation, right? The problem we specified last time is I give you temperature and pressure 
I give you the gas constant, I give you the gas dependent constants A and B and you're to solve it for the molar volume V. So what are we going to do here? Well first of all we have to get a function. Every time I give you an equation like this, the first thing to do is get an f of x equals zero, right? So to do that I'm going to bring the p over to the right hand side and set the whole thing equal to zero. Because you always have to have f of x equals zero, not f of x equals p, okay? So there's my function f of x. All right, so now what you have to do, and this is where the cost comes in, right? Now I have to find the derivative of that thing. So let's see if I, if I did it correctly or not. Well, I must have done it correctly or I'd have an error here. <laughs> it worked, so I must have done something right. All right, so what do I do here? Everyone knows how to take the derivative of this thing, right? You, you have a minus one comes out, this becomes squared, then you take the derivative of this whole thing, which is just one. Everyone knows how to take the derivative of that, right? Please? Okay. Just checking. Due diligence, it's called. Okay, so there's the derivative of the first term. Second term, um, what did I do the, there? Right, I multiplied this thing out, I guess, and got v squared. What did I do? Okay, so first of all, you're going to, you have this whole term, there's nothing in the numerator, so you have this whole term, that'll give you a minus one up there from the exponent there, that's why that becomes plus. You'll get this whole thing in the denominator squared, right, that's why t is not squared, any, not square root, it's just t, you get v squared, you get that whole term squared, and then you got to multiply times the derivative of this whole thing, okay, oh sorry, this whole thing. And so that's what, square root of t times v squared, that's where that term comes from, and then square root of t times v times v, and that's where that thing comes from. So anyway, it's just an exercise in differentiation. I see people yawning already, <laughs> I think I should. Let's focus on how we take the derivative of a function. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> all right, so that's the derivative of the function. How do I, how do I know it's correct? Because um, as we learn, I don't make mistakes, right? Um, I actually implement it at work. So there, so that's, this is the iterative equation now. So this is Vn plus 1, there's the Vn. So to get this function right, everywhere I see V, in, up here I plug in Vn, and the derivative, same thing. Every, every time I see V, I plug in Vn, okay? So if you take this into MATLAB, so the way I do these kind of calculations in MATLAB, because I'm lazy and don't want to write a script or a function or anything, is, um, I write one function that does f, right? First thing I do is guess a v. Then I write a function in MATLAB that evaluates the function f at v, and another, an, it's just a command, at the command line, you see, I'm just typing at the command line that function. I guess a v, I type in this function here, I hit return, that gives me the f of v. I type in this function, hit return, it gives me the f of v. Then I implement this equation, it gives me a new v. Then I do that, then I do that, then I do that and get a new v. And just keep, I just keep doing it at the command line. Back arrow, return, back arrow, return. <laughs> okay. You could write a function too if you want. All right. Um, and so I'll show you how it works in, in a minute for this. Well, wait a minute. I didn't do it? What kind of loser am I? Okay. I think I, 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 think I um, got these slides confused, right? This is supposed to be the next slide. All right. So we did this before, so for argon, I don't know why, um, I, got, I got this out of a book, it's why I'm looking at argon. So there's the two gas uh, constants for argon. There's the pressure as before. There's the temperature that I'm interested in. There's the gas constant. Um, so if you guess, last time we, we already did this with the direct uh, fixed point method. I don't want to keep calling it direct substitution. Fixed point method, we, we know that's the answer there. So if you guess point one, looks good, okay. If you guess one, unfortunately, divergence, okay? All right, so this is how this works. So if, you, if you're solving this the first time, right? Like you've, you've written this code and, you're sol and you use one, it diverges. Then the first thing I would do, because I've done this before and this is what you should do, is say maybe initial guess will work, another initial guess. The other pro the possibility is that you have an error in your code. That's very likely, actually. It's the more likely <laughs> outcome. But, so if I were to get this the first time, right? See, the point is, if I do this first, then I get this, I'm just like, well, that's a bad guess. But if I get this first, then I'm not, I don't know if it's a bad guess or I have a coding error, right? Because you, you could make an error in writing the code for all these functions and things here. So then I would try some other initial guesses. And if I continue to get divergence like this for every guess I made, then I'd start looking and think I got a problem with my code. 
So, but again, this emphasizes the fact that there's no free lunch, right? If your guess is too far away and you never know what too far away is, it diverges, okay? It's just, just the way it is, sorry. All right, so back to this slide. So to implement this, if you actually wanted to write, let's say you're interested in writing an algorithm. So when people say algorithm in my world, they mean they wrote a code like in MATLAB to solve this. What would you need? Well, first of all, someone would have to give you the function f and also give you a, another function. Someone would have to give you the, a, a, a MATLAB function. You remember we talked about functions? Someone would have to write a function that if you gave them x, they gave you the value of f of x back. Right? Someone would have to write another function that if you gave them x, they gave you the derivative of f back. They'd have to supply those. Why would they have to supply those? Because those are problem specific. Right? You can't know what they are unless you know what the problem is. You'd have to, they'd have to supply an initial guess of what the answer is. Okay? They'd also have to do, give you something like, or you would have a... So when you typically use a code like this, if you go into MATLAB and you say, like, help whatever the name of the code is, it'll tell you there's something that I use called the maximum number of iterations. The default value is 200. In other words, if you don't specify a number, I'm using 200. If you want to change it, you can. Same thing with these kind of tolerances, which I'll explain. But these are necessary, as I'll explain below. Okay. So you need the function, the derivative of the function, the guess. You need maximum number of iterations. The reason you have this is because if something goes wrong and you don't converge, you got to stop. <laughs> Otherwise, I guess you guys haven't coded much, but if you don't have something like this and it doesn't converge and you hit return, it, MATLAB will just go forever. Right? And then you'll have to close it like in Windows or something like that. You don't want to do that. So this ensures that you won't keep going. Let's be honest, if you do this iteration 200 times and you haven't converged, you're probably not going to. Right? So that's all this says. It says if, if I've gone up to 200 iterations or whatever number I choose, I'm going to stop. If I haven't stopped already, I'll stop then. Usually you need something, a convergence criteria that looks like this. Okay? So uh, maybe a more illustrative way to write this is um, like this. So what this is doing is it's measuring how different two successive values of x are. And then it's scaling for reasons I'll explain. Is that divided by xn? Okay, so the idea here is that you've got something called a tolerance delta. This tolerance might be like 10 to the minus 6th, okay? What you're doing here is you're measuring how far apart successive values of x are. In other words, if these two values are really close together, then, you, then you're going to stop. Like they're changing in the 10th significant digit or something like that, okay? But how close two numbers are together is a function of what the magnitude of those numbers are to begin with, right? Like if you had 1 and 2, I wouldn't call 2 and 1 close to each other. But I'd call 1 million and 1 million and 1 close to each other, right? So you have to scale by the magnitude of the number to begin with so that you have some relative idea of what the numbers are, okay? So usually you have things like this in the algorithm. They have some default value here, might be 10 to the minus 6th or something like that. That means you've gotten really close to this not changing anymore. You could keep going. And you would get a difference in the answer in like the f fourth or fifth significant digit, right? You don't care at that point. So this, you stop once this thing, you get less than this tolerance, okay? All right. So that's, that's the information you would need to, to um, write this. And so I know, and we're going to talk more about this uh, Tuesday, because the, the, the methods that are in MATLAB require all this information.